welcome our guests and welcome a wonderful artist, Abdullah Kandil. We are hosting a third talk, and the talk is based on a contemporary exhibition called La Centras or Make a Mark. It is the first contemporary exhibition that is hosted by Museum Yves Breyer, which is at Le Beau-Provence. And uh, this contemporary exhibition is hosting seven contemporary artists. And one of them I have the privilege to welcome today, which is Abdullah Kandil. How are you, Abdullah? I'm excellent. Thank you very much. What an honor. And uh, thank you very much for having me. Of course. Abdullah, so you have received a uh, phenomenal welcome in the museum, and I can see it in your audience, because audience is responding your drawings and your work wonderfully. And before we get there, I would love to give you a word and have you introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little about who you are. Okay, thank you so much. My name is, is, is Abdullah Kandil, and there are many ways I could introduce myself. Um, but the one that I want to focus on today is the human being, the sensitive, the gentle, the perceptive, the capable, and the expressive Abdullah. And that Abdullah decided to package all of these good things and become an artist. And I believe that me being an artist is not such a big deal, but it's what I do with it is what makes it a big deal. And I believe that as an artist, I'm doing an okay job because of the amount of people that I've impacted. I think that's who Abdullah Khandil is. It's the amount of people he's impacted uh, as an artist for yeah. them to find their rhythm their groove. But I'm from Saudi Arabia. I mm -hmm. grew up in England. Um, I have various, I have educations from various situations. And I've used them all to apply to the work that I'm going to show you today. And you'll see the variance of knowledge that yeah. I have access to. And it's amazing that if you find your groove and your rhythm as a creator, yeah. the knowledge that you possess can be applied. Mm -hmm. And once you run out of that application, you seek new knowledge. So mm -hmm. Abdullah Kandil today is not gonna be the same Abdullah Kandil next week, next month, next year. Um, it's all relative to the amount of knowledge yeah. that I grab and attain. And that knowledge can be in the form of books and boring stuff. Or it can be in the form of a movie. It can be in the form of an experience yeah. with a museum such as Yves Breyer and you and Michael, Michael Corman. So knowledge is what perpetuates Abdullah Khandil. And Abdullah Khandil today is all the knowledge that he has attained. And he is someone who wishes to share the beauty of the knowledge of where that knowledge can go in order to inspire other people to choose this path because this path tends to be more honest yeah thank you abdallah and so if you share with us please how did you get involved with the museum because you might have in the future somebody who inspires to be like you and think wow how as a young artist living in South Arabia, how do I show in the museum in South France? Well, here's the thing. I've been trying for years. <laughs> <laughs> for years, I've been going literally not just against the stream. I've been jumping, trying, sponsoring, communicating, showing, begging at some points mm. to work with a museum. And it never worked. It never worked. I never managed to get anything solid or concrete. Mm -hmm. And then I met simple, humble souls. And without knowing, I had been absorbed into this project. So the message here is that sometimes when you look at a fish in the water, if you try and grab it too quick, 
you won't be able to grab it because you don't mm. understand the reflection of, you know, if things are underwater, there's a certain angle of reflection due to light and waters, the, water, the molecules. So it happened by meeting you and mm. meeting Michael in Paris. I went to Paris and I set up a studio. So one, you can't really have everything aggressively, even if you try. Mm. Two, set up. Um, the fact that I set up in Paris in the beginning for me was a total loss. Yeah. The overheads were huge. But then when people see if you have faith in the process and when people see that you went to Paris, you set up a studio and you're painting and you're putting your works up and you might be depressed and you might have that sad look on your face because you're having to repeat yourself a thousand times a day. And to the most part, nobody really understands what you're doing. <laughs> nobody even, and and it, I've reached a point where, honestly, I'm not interested in even selling my works. Mm -hmm. If a sale comes, it comes. But I'm not even interested in selling them. And that keeps you mentally healthy. So when you get an opportunity to meet somebody like you and Michael, um, that just shows the quality of spirit that's really in the game. And I, I've been looking for that spirit. And that spirit is you, Marcella and Michael. And um, you actually didn't only invite me to this exhibit. Michael and you came to the studio several times to the atelier in Paris and gave me advice and gave me motivation and even helped other artists that were swinging, that were passing by my studio. So I would say that the way it happened was beautiful and it happened through teamwork. And the message here to any other artist is that it's not going to be what you expect the route. The route will always be a simple route to elevated souls. And these souls who are selfless, they will get you there. But otherwise, if you think that there's some fantasy MoMA theory or like you have to throw a party or something it's that's not the way and that doesn't work well wow. thank you for sharing that and you know what I really appreciate that you're so courageous and actually um, being vulnerable and saying what doesn't work because it's equally important to say what works and actually when we make mistakes when there are struggles and I think that's what makes you also relatable because it's important to share those things thank so, you yeah. and and i want to add on the vulnerability it's never enough yeah. you can never be too vulnerable in this in this field i think it's important to tell people continue being vulnerable because in the end there are others around you yeah that will see how vulnerable you're being and even if you lose and even if you're drowning they'll come and catch you you got to have the human faith element in, uh, in the industry. And I think it's lacking. And I think this relationship is inspiring. The show is inspiring. And that's why I find this museum inspiring, because all the seven artists have such phenomenal stories as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, let's touch up on the, on the subject. This you, has, you have slightly mentioned, we came to your studio. We have seen yeah. your work. Um, there were paintings everywhere. It was phenomenal space, I must admit. And we Thank have you. chosen linear drawings where we saw, wow, there, is, there are just these simple lines on a piece of paper, but the work was honest. Mm -hmm. It was humble, but very honest. We have taken mm -hmm. those works, we framed them, placed them in a, in a museum. How do you feel that work was influencing you? Because now that is representing you and holding the face in the museum? Was that impacting yeah. now in the current? It did. it did, it did, it did, it did, it did. Because if the simplest type of work yeah. is in the museum, it makes everything else so epic to me. So I started appreciating myself and yeah. my own work. You know, we're talking about black and white drawings went into mm -hmm. a museum and that, has made me ever so more careful about the application of color. Yeah. If I apply color, it should be really amazing. 
Mm -hmm. Do you like a tour? Yes. Shall I show? Please. So yeah. And before before you like show us beautiful lines, where are we? So we're logging in. What what city? What country? You are with Abdullah Gandil. You are at my home in Abu Dhabi. I converted the, I would say, quarter of the house into a studio. Mm -hmm. It's not as big as what I'm used to. So things are a little bit tighter. Yeah. And I would say this is one of the humbler studios that I've had. And I would like to share with you some of the humbler work yeah. that I've created. And some of the, the work here that I'm creating has taken longer to create. Mm -hmm. So we're in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And we are going to show right now. Okay, there we go. So this is where I'm sitting. Yeah. This is a view from the main chair mm -hmm. where I put the phone. And I usually have a, a red or, or, or blue pen. And this is where I do my notes. I always have a roll of canvas on the table to do the notes. And this is the table. And as you can see in the table, there's a variety of things going on. But I'm going to go to the most basic which is how you asked me a question, how did the museum affect my work? Yes. Um, specifically right here. So previously I would, if I was to work on a canvas, I would go straight away with the brush, mm -hmm. straight away. And now what I'm doing is I'm doing very thin lines on the canvas of the initial idea. So not to get lost. Okay. Because my mind is is explosive in ideas and emotions and memories. And I'm managing to control some of it, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. So one way where I have evolved through the museum show is that now I do linear lines prior to the brush touching it. I see. And those lines One, are made with with a pen or with, with a pen. With a with pen. pen. Yeah, with a marker pen. A mm -hmm. very light one. It's actually a calligraphy pen, mm -hmm. to be very precise. So uh, this is how it starts, and this is how it ends. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. How long does it take you to then finish the process on such size? Because it's quite a generous size of the canvas. It, it, it depends on what's going on in my life, what's going on. If uh, things are going well, I'm getting good news after good news, and I'm managing to compose my mood. Yeah. Um, every time I, I have a feeling where I'm in a good place, I come down here, I lay it out on the table, and I get to work. But if things are hard, it's very hard for me to paint. And I've realized that painting is a very precious process and it's important not to paint when you have negative feelings. Yeah. I don't like to paint when I have negative feelings because painting should be beautiful. So over here, you can see the original lines, Yeah. the characters, two characters. So there's three characters in this painting, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. And those preparatory drawings that are found now in the canvas, will they remain visible? Correct. Okay, I see. They remain visible, and it also shows the vulnerability of the piece. I think this is the main development that I've, I've extracted out of the museum show. And then here, if I may share with you, these are the smaller drawings that I'm doing. Yeah. And then some of them are letters. Yeah. Dearly beloved letters. I dream letters. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very vulnerable stuff. Yeah. So I'll and, just kind of cruise through them. And what is the medium used on those letters? Is it oil? Is it acrylic? So actually, I'm using oil pens. I so see. these are pens that emit opaque oil. Mm -hmm. and they give you good precision and they're not too thick so they allow you to work with the smaller size canvases yeah have you always used them 
or were you using yes. the medium before? Yes, these ones I, I'm quite familiar with. Mm -hmm. I'm quite familiar. This is a standard um, conversation. It's a conversation with the self. There's no solution to this. It's a, it's a constant riddle. It goes back and forth. It's, uh, it's in balance, though. I see. Do you have preparatory drawings or the alignment of colors? Or do you just go with the flow, as I put it in a simple way? So here's, OK, very, very good question. So here's kind of also, I think it's a really important message to share with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and I'm seeing now um, that a lot of people are becoming artists. There's a lot of people that are becoming who they really are. Mm -hmm. um, and my message to them is learn to shut out the impossible because what is possible is for you to create some type of rhythm. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a rhythm. So mine are my, my linear work. And if you find that rhythm, if you have so much faith in that rhythm, then the only other factor that you need to consider is what's going on in here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is, no, there is no free thought. I'm only pausing it by creating that first drawing mm -hmm. with the red pen, right? Yes. We said we create the line work. But that's because my medium is that way, yeah. that I actually have figures. So I use the red pen and then I use the brush. But my message to others is that there's a rhythm mm -hmm. and my rhythm is with the brush, of course. Back, 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 back. Know that rhythm and then apply what's going on in your head to that rhythm. And then what you get is magic. Yeah. Because what the result will be something you never planned, but it will communicate mm -hmm. even more than you expect. So I no see. plan for me. And when you say when you're facing the canvas, you already have image. Now, what about your thoughts? Let's talk about the decomposition of the ideas before you facing the canvas. What are you thinking about? What are your process, kind of thinking processes? Life. Mm -hmm. What about, what's exactly in life? Love. Yeah. I seek love. I seek love, of course. Yeah. Is, isn't that what everybody wants? Yes, but is it a romantic love or is it love in general? Or is it love within yourself for you? Or is it love to your profession? I want to be loved by everybody. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that way, you think? I think that's the ultimate way to live. To, be, to be loved by, by everyone. Yeah. Okay, I see. And I made so many, and I, as an artist, I made so many mistakes mm -hmm. that it's sometimes it, it feels like it's hard to be loved. Okay. Interesting. Because you, you've upset so many people. Mm -hmm. in the process of just trying to wake them up, mm -hmm. trying to ring an alarm to say, hey, okay. I deserve to be loved. I'm that special. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize it because they look down on art because they grew up learning that it's about banking. Mm -hmm. I see. And so if you look at the canvases from five years ago and then you look at your current canvas, what do you feel? I love myself more. Yeah. Yeah. The production community is with you now. I, I was producing to make money. Mm -hmm. I was guilty of that. Not saying that I wasn't genuine in the production itself, but the motive. Mm -hmm. Now it's different. I produce to be loved. 
Mm -hmm. And you've also touched up in your TEDx talk, um, also in believing yourself, and you've created a very interesting project where you, in a linear painting, you have covered your car previously. Why did that happen? Yeah. Why have you taken a 3D object and start painting on? It's very different to a flat 2D surface of canvas. Okay. That project was painted at the Dubai Opera House. It was a, there was a lot of ego involved. Okay. In fact, the car itself has a mode called ego. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was the peak of my ego is that I wanted to have a moving painting and I wanted to drive one of the most wanted vehicles that was painted and I wanted to see the reactions of people in public and I guess see. what I got love and when I got the love mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do with it because I understood that everything else didn't matter and I realized I was living bullshit Sorry for my language. But that's okay. It's received. But uh, 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 to see the children's reactions mm -hmm. to a moving painting in the streets of Paris. I drove it only in one country, mm -hmm. France. And to see the reactions of the yeah. kids is what really got to my heart. Uh -huh. Would you ever consider painting on 3D objects again? Or are you happy now with your linear work as, as we are at the moment? Sky's the limit. I'm probably going to have a painting satellite in Earth. Yeah. Or I, 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 my mind wants to go farther and farther in expansion. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm limited. I would say what hasn't been done before is very important. Mm -hmm. It's important to expand in a way where it hasn't been, you know, I, I don't see myself doing what Picasso did, which is what going into pottery. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I see myself going into a direction which has not been done before. Mm -hmm. And maybe being sustainable and maybe reactive and maybe orbiting the earth and maybe making a message. I initially invested into a satellite project. Yeah which builds a satellite. I was supposed to paint the satellite. Mm -hmm. And then the satellite was supposed to go orbit the Earth and monitor the Amazon rainforest. And every single time a fire would happen or a burn or deforestation would occur, people who had signed up to the satellite app, which I'm in the process of, putting together it just requires a lot of funding and yeah. you have to choose where to go every time a note every time something happens you get a push notification with an image because the satellite contains something called a chameleon imager yeah. and then that image would then go on social media as a valid image and current image of what's going on unlike some people celebrities yeah who take images that are not real and post them. Saying Amazon is burning and it's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Although it is a truth, but it's not the truth. When mm -hmm. you have precision, you have the truth. So that's an object that I'd like to paint and take up into orbit. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, But I, I, I say this and I want to be careful because I must admit, that originally, when I did come up with this idea, it was very egotistically driven because I was like, I want to have the fastest piece of art, 17,900 kilometers per hour orbiting, the, miles per hour orbiting the Earth. And yeah. so I see. It's about killing the, the ego. Uh, okay. That's kind of the new Abdullah. So that was the project that's already existing. And I would love to ask you one more question that is about your future. How do you envision it? Where do you want to go? And how do you see your work then progressing? What's in the future? I have, I have no 
idea. <laughs> yeah, are you feeling excited but, about it actually? That you have no idea in a way? I take a day, I take it day by day, but what I do know is how I'll conduct myself now. Mm -hmm. That's what I know. Um, but to give you an answer, something that's never occurred or happened and something that will, in a very humble way, uh, inspire everyone to find their rhythm. Yeah, That's the key. I want everybody to, to just see the simple story. I don't want to complicate my story. Mm -hmm. The more complicated the story is, the more uh, ego involved, uh, the more difficulty for others when they look at you. Mm -hmm. I want to simplify things. And with the simplification, it's not about just being an artist because if you manage to get into this rhythm of life, you affect everybody around you positively. And if more people affect everybody else around them positively through the beauty of their creations, I think I then would be ready to die. Mm -hmm. And one more question. Now that you have left Europe, and you're looking at a very different landscape of your environment or even uh, nature. Do you feel that influences your drawing a little bit or doesn't touch it at all? You're very strong-minded and keep your, reserve your images. I'm going to be very honest. And I'm going to tell you that I've never left Europe and I never want to leave Europe. And Europe is always part of my heart. Yeah. And that I will be back in Paris very soon. I'm so looking forward to receiving you back and hopefully we will be able to host your exhibition. We'll do some solo plan and yes, it would be sure. such a privilege to then hold a glass of champagne with you and say, well, I'm going to hug you in person. I'm so looking forward to so doing this. So I'd like, thank you so much for finding the time recording this interview. And I'd also like to say thank you to Adelis Ice Production, Film Production and Victoria Lacoste who have supported the museum and in a patronage way helped this project come to life. So again, thank you so much. And I look well forward done. to welcoming you in Paris. <laughs>